everybody. Okay, day one of our virtual learning for the week. We are going to start with some language. Um, we are in chapter seven of our language book, Shirley English, um, and we have already learned a couple things about conjunctions, um, how they work, what they do, and how we can find them in a sentence. For a review, Please listen to your jingle, first of all, for Shirley English conjunction jingle. And then also, let's just review the three that we have been working on. So the coordinating conjunctions, and, but, and, or. Remember that and, and combines two things, but contrasts two things, and, or gives us a choice. Um, so those are the ones that we've really been working on and focusing on for the last couple of days. Now, we went through lesson two in the classroom, but what we didn't do was go through classroom practice 27. Sorry, I had to look at the, we have my screen on over there. So classroom practice 27. I'd like to go over classifying the first um, two sentences with you and also the end of it. So just go through all of classroom practice 27. So pause right now if you need to, make sure you have classroom practice 27 in front of you and we are gonna go over that together right now. So the first sentence that we find in exercise one is go quickly to the store for bread and milk. Now, we learned in the last chapter of Shirley English that the first thing that we ask is who should go quickly to the store for bread and milk? If we don't see a subject in our sentence, well, we know we have a subject, but it is the understood you. So it's the subject pronoun you. So we're just going to write you and in parentheses subject pronoun over here and then we automatically know that this is going to be an imperative sentence. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those two things on our sentence. So we know that you is our subject pronoun. What is being said about you? In other words, what is the verb? What should you do in this sentence? Well, we find that we should go. So go is our verb in the sentence. The next question that we ask is our adverb questions. How, when, and where? So we, it says you go. How should you go? Well, you should go quickly. So that is our adverb. So quickly is our adverb because it describes or modifies our verb. So we go, and how do we go? Quickly. The next thing we're going to ask is, well, first we're going to recognize that to is a preposition, right? Because we learned all of our prepositions in chapter three. So we know that to is a preposition, but we're going to ask the question, you go quickly to what? To store. So that is the object of our preposition. And there's our prepositional phrase, to what? To store. Remember that when we see an object of the preposition, we need to make sure it's a noun because an object of the preposition can only be a noun. Store is a person, place, thing, or idea, so we're set there. And then we know that the is an article adjective. So, so far, we have this much done, classified. So now we're going to look at the rest of it for bread and milk. Well, we know that for is also a preposition. It's one of the ones we learned, so we're going to mark it as a preposition, and then we're going to say, go quickly to the store for what? For bread and milk. Well, here we have and. And is one of the conjunctions that we've been working on, so we're gonna go ahead and mark that as a conjunction. And then if we're going for bread, we know that bread is an object of the preposition, and we're also going for milk. So milk is an object of the preposition. However, because we have more than one object of the preposition, and we have a conjunction in between, we need to make sure that we show that these are compound object pronouns. Okay, so let's go back through. Now what we do is go back and show that it is the subject noun verb pattern one sentence. 
we do a skill check. We know that it's an imperative sentence because we had to show that we have the understood you as our subject pronoun. We make sure everything is classified. We divide our complete subject from our complete predicate. And in this case, we don't even have a subject in our sentence, or at least not written in our subject or in our sentence. So we're just going to put our line right in front of our verb. So everything has a, a um, label. So we have classified this sentence. And we are able to recognize that and is a conjunction and show what it is joining our compound object pronouns. All right, let's go to the next one. The next sentence says, he and his friends went to the cafeteria for lunch. Okay, he and his friends went to the cafeteria for lunch. The first question that we ask is, who went to the cafeteria for lunch? He and his friends. Well, we can notice right here that and is a conjunction, so we can mark that. And then we're going to say, okay, what is it combining? What is it joining together? Well, he went to the cafeteria for lunch, so that's a subject pronoun. Friends went to the cafeteria for lunch. So that is a subject noun. So we have a subject pronoun and a subject noun, and they're combined or joined together with a conjunction. So we have a compound subject pronoun, a conjunction, and a compound subject noun. Once we've done that, we've really done the hard part. The only thing we need to do is figure out what his is in the sentence. So if we look at this, we know that his answers whose. So he and his friends, he and friends, whose friends, his friends. So that is a possessive pronoun adjective because it, it is an adjective. It is telling us something about our noun, but it is also showing possession because his friends, right? So whose friends, his. What is being said about he and his friends? Well, they went. So we have a verb. Then we're going to look at the fact that to is a preposition. So we can go ahead and mark that as a preposition and begin our prepositional phrase. So e, he and his friends went to, to what? Cafeteria. Cafeteria is a person, place, thing, or idea. So we can mark that as an OP, object of the preposition, and be set. The, we know, is an article adjective. And now we can move on to the next part, for lunch. Well, we know that for is a preposition. For what? Lunch. Lunch is a noun, and so it can be the object of our preposition. So now we have classified everything in this sentence. We're going to go back, write that it is a subject noun verb pattern one, because we have our subject and then our verb. It is a declarative sentence because it gives us a statement. And then we go back to our verb and divide our complete subject from our complete predicate. Okay, hopefully you've been able to follow along with this. We pointed out or shown what our two conjunctions are, one in each sentence, and we've been able to show that they are combining two things. Okay, so they're combining here, the objects of the preposition, and here, our subject pronoun and subject noun. Okay, so now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to our labels. So we should know our seven labels so far. We have a subject noun, verb, pronoun, preposition, adjective, adverb, and now we've included the, what am I missing? I'm missing something, well, the conjunction. Hello. So the conjunction and I think that's all. Okay. So subject noun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and there we go. Right? Okay. So now we're going to move on to our final part. I'm going to erase this so we can work on this together. Do -do -do. Okay, so the final part is asking us, or I'm sorry, not the final, but exercise three, is asking us 
to decide or to label each of the sentences as what they are. The ones that we've learned so far, we've only learned four types of sentences, and they are a simple sentence. So a simple sentence is just a sentence. It can have, it has one subject noun, one verb. It can have lots of adjectives, adverbs, prepositional phrases, but it's simple. It doesn't have any conjunctions, interjections, things like that. Then we've learned that we can have a simple sentence with a combined subject. So that would be like back in exercise one, he and his friends went to the cafeteria for lunch. That would be a simple subject, simple sentence with a compound subject. Our conjunction was in our subject. Okay, then we've learned simple sentence with a compound verb. Okay, so that would be something like, um, the girl played and jumped in the puddles. Okay, so she both played and jumped in the puddles. So it's just saying that we have one subject noun or one subject, but we have two verbs. And so our conjunction is combining those two verbs. And then finally, we have been talking about the compound sentence. And the compound sentence combines two independent clauses. So we talked about how an independent clause can stand on its own. In other words, it is a complete sentence by itself. But instead of saying things like, the girl played, the girl jumped, the girl whatever, we decide to make it one sentence, one compound sentence, to make it a little more interesting and not so repetitive. So an example that you would see would be in number three, okay? So number three says, you must listen to these directions or you might get lost, okay? So when we look at a compound subject, or I'm sorry, a compound sentence, remember what we're looking for. We have two independent clauses, but we have three ways that we can join them, or I'm sorry, two ways that we can join them. We can join them with a comma and a conjunction, or we can join them with a semicolon, okay? So what we have in number three is the comma with the conjunction. So we have an independent sentence or independent clause. You must listen to these directions. That can stand by itself. And then the second part can stand by itself. You might get lost. That can stand by itself. But instead of saying, you must follow the directions, you might get lost, we decide to combine those two with a comma and the word or conjunction or. So in this case, it's a compound sentence. So number three is a compound sentence. Another compound sentence is number two. So number two, we have two independent clauses joined again by a comma and conjunction. We have, we ate eggs for breakfast, independent clause. That's one complete sentence. We have, we did not eat any pancakes. That's also a complete sentence or independent clause. But we've joined them with comma, but, in order to make it one compound sentence. So we have, we ate eggs for breakfast, comma, but we did not eat any pancakes. So both of those are compound sentences. Now let's look at number one. The soda fell off the table and spilled on the floor. So what you wanna do here is find out, first of all, what is our subject? So you're going to ask who or what fell off the table and spilled on the floor. And you're going to mark that as your subject noun. Then once you have that subject noun, you're going to ask, what did it do? What is being said about it? And you'll notice that you have a conjunction and in that sentence. So you need to find out in this sentence, what is it combining? So the soda is our subject noun. What did the soda do? Well, it both fell and spilled. So that uh, conjunction is combining our two verbs, fell and spilled. And then you're going to fill in the rest as prepositional phrases. Where did it fall? Where did it spill? Okay. 
So that first one is going to be a simple sentence with a compound verb. We answer two and three, let's do four and five. Four, Lily and Ben played the piano in the talent show. Who played the piano in the talent show? Well, it tells us Lily and Ben. We have a conjunction combining our two subject nouns. So that's going to be a simple, simple sentence with a compound subject. And then finally, number five, I left my backpack in dad's truck yesterday. Well, we don't see any conjunctions. We don't see any commas or semicolons. So in this case, it's just a simple sentence. Okay, finally, we're gonna get to exercise four. In exercise four, you're going to put a slash between your two independent clauses because we just worked on compound sentences. So they're both going to be independent clauses. You're going to put a slash in between the two independent clauses and then combine them with what it's asking you at the end to combine it with. So the first one says, my sister, my sister washed, yes, sorry. My sister washed the car windows. My brother cleaned the, I thought that said clean the trees, sorry. My sister washed the car windows. My brother cleaned the tires. So we have two complete sentences there. So we need to put a slash in between our two complete sentences. And then what it's asking us to do is instead make it into one compound sentence using comma and. So don't forget you need a capital letter and you need an end mark. And so we end up with my sister washed the car windows, comma, and my brother cleaned the tires, period. Then you can pause it right now if you need to finish that up. I'm going to move on to number two. Number two tells us, I tasted the soup. I did not like it. So we're going to put a slash in between those two independent clauses or those two complete sentences. And then we're going to combine them into one compound sentence using comma, but. So don't forget, you need a capital letter and an end mark. And we're going to write, I tasted the soup, comma, but I did not like it, period. Okay, you can pause again so that you can catch up. And then I'm going to go through number three now, and I'm just going to read it to you, and I want you to figure it out on your own. So number three says, my clothes were muddy. Grandma washed them. And it wants you to find the two complete sentences or two independent clauses put a slash between them, and then combine them into one compound sentence using a semicolon in between. Don't forget to use a capital letter and an end mark. So I'm going to let you do that one, and we are done for today. I can't wait to see the work that you've done, and I will see you again tomorrow. All right, see you guys later.